And welcome everybody into our next Beyond the Board session here for the Pro Chess League. We are with the one and only St. Louis Archbishops, the only team in doing my research for this to make the final four of the PCL in all three years of its existence. So already I feel like I deserve, uh, I don't deserve anything. You guys deserve a congratulations for that. Um, and I'm going to start with you, Mike, as, as the manager and, and in some ways kind of the face of the team these days. What does the St. Louis team need to do to return to championship glory from 2017 that they didn't do last year in 2018? Well, I sure hope I'm not the uh, face of the team. I'm sure people are thinking more like, wow, they got superstar grandmasters Fabiano Cariano and uh, Wesley So as the face of the team. This year, we're in a much better shape as we will have one of our superstars, uh, you know, 2,700 plus players uh, attending in San Francisco this year. Last year, Fabiano was in Granky and uh, for to say of uh, declined the invitation. So we're in a much better shape now that we have uh, one of our superstars uh, actually attending as we did in 2017, where Wesley so rocked the house, you know, and uh, led us to uh, the world championship. That's true. And, and Wesley, you were the MVP that year, I believe in 2017. Uh, and uh, you, you didn't play uh, in, in, in last year's finals and, and you won't be there this year, but, uh, what would be your advice to uh, to your teammates heading into the uh, the Pro Chess League Finals, knowing what it took to win the championship in 2017? Well, I feel I feel very confident with our team. We have really good players. Let's talk about we have we have a very well balanced team with a lot of strong players. So if one player cannot stay, then the other will just pick up the pace. Uh, well, we, we lost last year to Armenia Eagles. So hopefully we can, you know, we need to we need to get our revenge this year. We need to get some games happening. You know, uh, they're, a real, they're a really good team, but I think objectively, you know, our team is, our team is better. And uh, I would like to thank Mike Coomer for inviting me to play again this year. Um, I... I didn't play last year because I was trying to focus for the candidates tournament, but I uh, I really regretted not not playing the Pro Chess League because it's such an exciting event and it's very good practice and and warm up. You know, my tournament Ivory Coast is also rapid in this tournament. Um, so hopefully the 11 weeks of practice I did this year is, uh, will be helpful. Well, you say you regretted not playing in 2018 after being the MVP in 2017. But this year, of course, I, I think we know that if you if it wasn't for the conflict with the Grand Chess Tour, right, in Ivory Coast, you would have loved to have been at the finals. So as, as a grandmaster of your level who is seen actively by all the Chess.com members in the chat, always rooting on your teammates, will you be rooting for them from the Ivory Coast? And uh, how much will you miss not being there? Oh yeah, I would definitely be following and cheering for St. Louis Archbishop. They're the only team I'll play for. Um, we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm confident with our team chances. You know, we have Fabiana, and I'm also kind of happy not to not to be in San Francisco because I I played eleven weeks in the in the regular season. And unfortunately, with two twenty seven hundred plus players, we couldn't play Benjamin Bob in the same team as us. So now, now he can play, and now you can Raleigh could play also. And uh, I have full confidence in in them. Benjamin Bob played in played seven games in the in the regular season, and he played really well, scoring four and a half out of seven. So. And then it might all turn out to be good. I get to play Ivory Coast, which I've never been there before. And uh, maybe the team would do better without me. And it is. Well, it's high words of praise there, obviously, from Wesley. So for you, uh, Benny, can I call you Benny? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
So uh, high words of praise there, uh, Mr. Bach, seriously. And obviously we know that you didn't get as many chances to play this season precisely because of what Wesley just said, right? The, the two-headed monster, as we often called it, of Carwana and So. Uh, but how excited are you to, to get, uh, get to San Francisco and, and to try to help the team win in, in Wesley's absence? Yeah, I'm definitely very excited to, uh, to play in San Francisco. And um, yeah, obviously we'll be missing Wesley because he led the team very well earlier in the season. But yeah, I'm very confident in, in our chances because also uh, Nicholas, he's very good in rapid. So uh, yeah, and I'm also confident in Julian. So I think Mike did a terrific job uh, throughout the whole season to put together a very good team. And yeah, I'm very confident in our chances. Well, let's stay on that topic then, Mike. I mean, we're going to really dive into the weeds here. These beyond the boards are for the the Power Pro Chess League fans. We've got a couple of guys here who, who won't be in the finals, Hans and Wesley. We know that Wesley isn't there because of his performance or his uh, commitment to the Grand Chess Tour. But Hans is not in the lineup. Maybe you can explain that decision before I ask Hans a couple questions. And then also explain what prompted you to put Julian in at board four, even though Julian uh, has actually not played for St. Louis in any match this entire year. So maybe give us some insight. Obviously, all these interviews are coming out at the same time, so I don't think you're giving any competitive edge to the, to the other teams. We'd really like to hear what your thoughts are on not bringing cons to San Francisco and, and, and playing Julian, who hasn't played all year. Sure. Um, so we, had a, we have a bunch of different lineups that we can obviously uh, choose from. And uh, the A team going into this uh, season was uh, Fabiano, Wesley, Hans Neiman, and, and Nicholas uh, Rosenthal. So that worked uh, really well in the uh, match play. However, a, a big, uh, big part of that uh, lineup, of course, is uh, Wesley So. So when you take Wesley So out, we don't have another uh, 2,700 to replace them. So that team would just uh, not do as well without Wesley in it. So now we got uh, Nicholas uh, Theodoro, who uh, even though he's an international master, he's uh, he plays uh, high level chess and he's actually won a lot of our uh, Saturday night specials that have the uh, same uh, time control as uh, the pro chess league format. Mm. So we were really excited to have him in the, uh, in the lineup. With so many different lineups, there's just so many different uh, players that we can uh, choose from. And um, so Nicholas, Nicholas works well with, uh, with the uh, like, uh, player, not as well as uh, Nicholas Rosenthal, or not, not at his uh, rating level, uh, Fide. Julian Prolico, he's a... Uh, He's a really uh, good uh, good player. He's uh, won a lot of tournaments at the uh, chess club as well. He actually just won the uh, April Knights, netting him uh, three hundred dollars. So uh, he's ready to go out there and uh, and really uh, shock the world, just as uh, Forrest Shen did uh, last year. Julian, are you ready? Uh, yeah. I mean, Your coach I'm... says you're ready, right? So you got to be ready, right? I mean, I'm just gonna try and survive. I don't know about. Uh, are you uh sorry i had a little trouble hearing you there that's okay we're rolling with it um so are you nervous having not played all year right and you see your coach's confidence in you how much pressure do you feel to perform right now um i feel a lot of pressure to perform well um i i'm very nervous so, um i'll try i'll try my best and i'll try and uh, I'll try and survive the monsters that's great. Well, luckily, I can read lips, and I heard you say you, you feel a lot of pressure, but uh, you're also confident and ready. Um, I, I want to go to Hans now and, uh, and say that um, you're, you're, you're not in the lineup coming to San Francisco. We appreciate you doing the interview anyway, and you have been somebody who, who played for the, uh, the Bishops this year. Are you, uh, you going to be helping the team in any other way in regards to preparation or obviously rooting them on, but are you uh, disappointed in not coming to San Francisco, and what will you be doing to help the team since you can't be there? Um, uh, I'm slightly disappointed that I'm not going, but I do understand that without Wesley, it's really not the best option. And I think that the lineup that we're going right now is honestly the best that we can do in our specific predicament. And I'm very confident in all the players that are going, and I'm sure that uh, we can take on the title. 
Um, I don't think that I'll, I'll definitely be following the tournament, supporting, you know, cheering for everyone who's playing. I don't know what my role will be in terms of preparation, but I guess that would be something that will be uh, decided later on. Yeah, okay. Mike, uh, I'm going to come back to you with a question. That One of the things we've observed about, about the league is that it, it does seem that some players perform better in the team environment uh, when, they, when they feel the accountability they have to teammates. Chess is such an individual game, right? The ultimate sort of individual mind sport. But knowing that some of the players may play better when they're in that environment, um, is that something you think about as a manager in terms of who you pick? Or is, it, or is that not something that uh, goes into your, your thought process? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's for, foremost on the, on the mind. Yeah, um, if you look at how our uh, team is constructed, uh, even going back to 2017, it's a, it's a lot of uh, college kids, high school kids that are on a chess team. Uh, like our, most of our uh, team is either comprised of uh, Lindenwood students going back to even the U.S. Chess League or, um, or even Webster or, uh, well, now in the Pro Chess League, pretty much all uh, slew kids. So they have a built-in uh, camaraderie and uh, and accountability, as you say, and Alejandro Ramirez uh, does a great great job of uh, recruiting kids for SLU, and then I can just easily recruit them to the uh, Archbishop. So it's a, it, it works out very well. Yeah, uh, Benjamin, you're a free agent, so you're not from St. Louis in, in that sense, but you are somebody who has experience playing in a lot of team events. I, I think that club team events are have been historically much more of a part of European chess culture than even in the U.S. So would you say you're somebody who you feel plays better in a team event or worse in a team event? Uh, well, actually, uh, I am from St. Louis because I studied at St. Louis University. Um, oh, okay. But, <laughs> but I didn't yeah. know that. Are you there right Are you there right now? Yeah, I'm at, yeah, I'm at, I'm at campus right now at St. Louis University. But, so... but you're listed as a free agent. Is that Greg Shahadi's mistake? Should I yell at him? Yeah, I think – wait, who – is it Greg's mistake or Mike's? Oh, wait, you are or... listed as a local player. That's my mistake. Classic <laughs> Danny blaming Greg. Classic blaming Greg. My mistake. Uh, okay, so you're a local player because you're attending yeah. St. Louis. Got it. Yeah, I joined the, the chess team here in August 2018. So, um, But you yeah. still have a lot of experience playing team events from, yeah, from being yeah. from Europe. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a pity that in the U.S. they don't have leagues like we have in, in Europe, like the Dutch League, the German Bundesliga, uh, and so forth. But I think the the pro chess league is really a great project to, um, yeah, have some kind of league and especially how you guys promote it to the viewers and I like the rapid format which keeps it more entertaining. Um, but yeah, I do have a lot of experience. I also played for the Dutch national team uh, twice. Um, yeah, and it all I feel like it always motivates me to to play for the team. So yeah, that you not only that you also can bring glory to the team. You know. Yeah. Okay. Wesley, what about you? Do you, do you think that, um, uh, that you, you also really like that environment? You seem to be so active in cheering for your teammates, as I mentioned earlier. And I think it's uh, something we've mentioned on almost every show that you tend to be chatting, multitasking, chatting and kibitzing in games while you're playing your own game. So clearly you have an interest and a rooting interest. Do you really enjoy the team aspect? Yeah, I feel I've been chatting too much during my game. I, should just, I think the, back in 2017, I was chatting less and I was trying to win my games better <laughs> but well you still uh, did pretty well you're, you're hard on yourself but anyway the team aspect you feel like that brings the best out of you despite the distraction of chatting yeah i like to me team events are very special events uh well, chess league olympia you know sometimes the world team um because most of my chess tournaments are individual only so mm -hmm. it's i'm really just just playing for me but in, in a team events, it's the team that matters, and it's the the most important thing is for for the team to win. And so it doesn't really matter for me if I score two and a half or three or three and a half, as as long as the team wins. And uh, well, um, to reach it all the way to the semifinals already requires some some strong play and, and a little and a little luck, right. um, but. In the end, we've managed to get there. Um, so hopefully, we can we can beat Ar Armenia this year, and uh, and get to the final. 
Julian, you you uh, you haven't played this year, uh, but how do you expect you'll perform in the in the team environment? Do you have experience playing on teams uh, scholastically? Uh, not not really, actually. Uh, team team chess is uh, very new for me, but um, I, I'm very excited to uh, to try it, at least to perform well. Is it is it pressure being board four when Fabiano Caruana's board one? De definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we love the honesty. Yeah, it is. It is. It's got to be right. Yeah. Uh, Hans, what about you? Do you feel like you played you played uh, better as a team, or is it something that uh, can be distracting at times? Talk a little about what it's like as an a talented young man individually, normally normally focused on only your own chess, and now you're worried about the team. Thank you for the praise, Danny. Um, so in a team format, it's pretty unique. You know, you're you, you can't just focus on yourself, and you really have to focus on the team aspect. So that does add a little bit of extra pressure that could result in mistakes. And, you know, I, in my first match, I was extremely nervous. But, you know, after I, I got my first win, a lot of the stress was relieved. Um, but it, the stress can go both ways. And it's really, it is very motivating and to know. And if you really have a good result and you can really help the um, team win the match, that's, that's a really great feeling. Um, so I do really enjoy team events. Um, this was, I really enjoyed the opportunity that Mike gave me to play in the Pro Chess League because I had been trying to get into it um, in the first two years, but I didn't get on a team. So thank you to Mike for giving me the opportunity to play on such a great team. Yeah, you, you got rid of those nerves uh, pretty early, huh? Because you won your first game against the uh, London Lion, right? Yeah, yeah, that yep. was that, that, that really it that helps, was, right? Helps, yeah, that yeah. really helped. I was well, shaking, you know, sweating. After that, we were fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, what? Julian's being a little uh, modest. Uh, we had a tournament over at the Youth Learning Center uh, a couple years ago. He was part of the Dream Team, and he led them to a victory. And, and last year, he played one match in the uh, Pro Chess League, and he got a draw against the Grandmaster. So, you know okay. what he's doing. <laughs> so you, you feel confident in your board four. That's awesome. Let me, let me ask you, Mike. So back to this year. The, the the Armenia Eagles in, in many ways won the whole thing because of their, their blitz prowess, their rapid prowess. Um, and I think for everybody, they were considered a massive underdog, even against you guys without your 2700s, and then certainly against Xiong Du in the finals. When we talked to them, they really gave a lot of credit to the fact that they have several players over 2900 at blitz on chess.com and just how comfortable they are if matches make it to a tie break. So let me ask you the tough question. If a match with them goes to a tie break, do you feel you have the blitz prowess on your lineup to stop them? Yep, yep, yep. Because that's how, that's how we constructed the, uh, the lineup for here. Well, I'll, I'll ask you an even more tough question specific. <laughs> Who do you think is a harder blitz person for them to face, Benjamin Buck or Fabiano Caruana? Well, that's what I was just getting at. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had the uh, U.S. Collegiate Rapid and Blitz in uh, March held at SLU. And Benjamin Bach, uh, in the second out of uh, 50 players, 50 strong, strong players to, uh, to get second place in that uh, blitz event. And it has the same time control as the uh, gauntlet. So if they can get through Benjamin Bach, guess what? <laughs> we got, got one of the best so, players. So was that, was that part of your strategy? I was, I was, my team and I do preparation for these interviews. And, and I think one of the fair, tough questions is Fabiano, while being the world number two and obviously – you know, uh, deserving of, of amazing praise for his classical chess, has sometimes taken heat for not being quite as good at blitz as some of his peers at the highest level. So was, was fielding Benjamin Bach like part of, part of your match strategy? Well, uh, no, no doubt about it that, uh, you know, we're bringing the young guns to uh, San Francisco and they can, they can blitz it out. Him, Theodoro, Julian, they can blitz it out with, uh, with anybody from uh, the other uh, three uh, teams. I love it. I love the, I love the match strategy we're getting into here. Um, now I understand why Jacobian's not around. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> hey, Vars, Vars not the worst coach player. <laughs> No, I'm mean, the young gun now. <laughs> <laughs> the young gun, yeah. Uh, I was expecting Mike would put uh, Fabiano, Jacobian, Benjamin Bo, and... Uh, What's his name? A bloomer. Josh Bloomer. And Josh Bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it, it makes sense. So uh, let me ask you another question. So let's say you get past Armenia, and, and uh, you, you're looking across the, the, the other side of the semifinal. You've got the stock, uh, sorry, not the Stockholm, the bottom, bottom snowballs and the Xiangdu pandas. 
Who who do you who would you rather face out of those two teams? Asking you, Mike, first. Oh, I, honestly, this this is probably would sound like a cliche answer, but I you know I don't give cliche answers. But honestly, I don't care. We're we're going down there with the unfinished business from last year. Our goal is to uh, knock out Armenia. I love it. And is that also part of the mindset you're going to instill into your team? Don't look past Armenia. They are the reigning champions, right? One match at a oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, all credit to them uh, last year. You know, we, we tied them 6-6 and then uh, fell apart at the end, unfortunately. And uh, we can't have that happen again. Well, even though that's your job as the coach to keep them focused, I'm going to distract your team by asking each of them the same question. I'll start with Hans since he won't be there. Maybe easier for him to answer. Who do you think your team would rather face, Baden Baden or Shang Du? Baden Baden. Baden Baden. Think... Give me, give me, give me a why. So um, I think that uh, Cheng Du's team is somewhat similar to ours, as they have two, I guess, pretty strong players. Uh, I think you said Li Chao and another, I guess, Wong, Wong Yue. Yeah, yeah, Wong so the, the, the board's one and two. I guess maybe on average, they're probably about the same if you average them out. So that's um, 